So Sadhguru, what are some of the things that, you know, all of us who are here listening to you, what are the one or two things that we can do tomorrow, which will, which will increase this level of awareness, perception, thoughtfulness? Oh, you're talking about a takeaway, huh? In a sense, but you know, uh, an enduring takeaway. It's not light-hearted. It's not, uh, you know, because we've, you know, we've heard a lot, and I'm sitting here and saying, okay, so what do I do differently tomorrow? Let's say to learn A, B, C, the twenty-six alphabets. At least, if you learn the Indian languages, you're not fifty-four, whatever. Twenty-six alphabets. How long did you take to learn to write them properly in their proper order and use them whichever way you want? How long did you take? Oh, I'm still at it. <laughs> A long time. At least three, four years yep. minimum. Yeah. To learn to make sentences and use the way you want, maybe you took twelve, fifteen years. Much it? longer than that, yes. So you gave so much just to learn some word craft, but to know something about the fundamental nature of your existence which could just change you dimensionally, you want to know it in two minutes. Why are you so unfair? No, I only want to know where to start in two minutes. Okay, where to start? <clears throat> just do this much before you go to bed today. One thing is every hour, okay? Remind yourself, right now it's going to be eight o'clock, eight o'clock, remind yourself, wow, I'm still alive. No, don't laugh. So many people who go to bed today will not wake up tomorrow morning. More than a million people on the planet will not wake up tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, suppose you wake up. Yes, who knows? You always think it's not me, it's going to be somebody. Very cruel <laughs> Tomorrow morning if you do wake up, first check, am I really awake, alive? I'm still alive, wow! Don't have to do anything, don't scream or something. Well, at least one big smile, okay, I'm still alive. Over a million people didn't wake up tonight, but here I am, alive. Fantastic or no? What is the biggest thing in your life? You're alive right now. So, you're still on tomorrow morning, just one smile, wow! Then maybe there are two, three, four people who matter to you much in your life, just check he and she and that one and this one is alive. All alive, great! <laughs> if one million people died tonight, which they do every night, at least ten million people lost somebody who was dear to them. But none of those who are very dear to you are gone today, Fantastic or no? Yes. Another big smile, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Just smile, okay. Right? Eight o'clock in the morning, wow, eight o'clock, still alive. Every one hour, just do this exercise, okay? Every one hour, just remind yourself, check on. Please understand this. If you think about God, you will become hallucinatory. Only when you are conscious about your mortality, will you want to truly know the nature of this life. When you know, you're on right now and tomorrow morning you may be poof, gone. Now you want to know what the hell, what is this? I'm real right now, but tomorrow morning, gone. So many people who are so real and on, suddenly gone. Can't believe where did they go? But you thought about it for ten minutes and then you got busy. You had to text, my father is dead <laughs> But remind yourself of your own mortality, let the question deepen. If you can do it every moment, it's great. If you cannot, at least once an hour, remind yourself that you're mortal, you're not immortal, you're mortal. If you know that you're mortal, suddenly you will see in a few days you have no time to do any nonsense which doesn't mean anything to you. 
you will do only what really matters to your life. You have no time to do any rubbish with anybody. You will have time only to make the… do the best things that you want to do, what you truly care to do in your life and nothing other than that. And that's what you should be doing because it's a very limited amount of time. <laughs> I want you to know, it's a very brief life, that is if you're a joyful person. If you're a miserable person, of course it's a long life. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're joyful, if you live for hundred years, it's gone too quickly. If you're miserable, what a long life you will live, you know. So it's a very brief life. You should not be doing anything other than what truly matters to you, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. But you're doing so much nonsense which doesn't mean anything to you, simply because you think you're immortal. Otherwise, people are saying, no, I will live up to eighty, maybe hundred, so I will do this at seventy, I will… I will smile at my neighbor when I was seventy-five, you know, when all my work is done, when all the property issues are settled, <laughs> after that I'll smile at him. There is no such guarantee. Has anybody here come with a guarantee card for two days? No, you could be dead tomorrow morning. I'm not wishing that, I bless you with a long life, but it's possible, right? Every day it's happening to a million people means, can't it be you and me tomorrow morning, I'm asking? Yes or no? Yes. If you are conscious of your mortality, becoming aware will naturally happen because the significance of being alive will blossom. Uh, you used all kinds of words which are straight from the American coast, mindfulness, awareness, mental alertness. No, you need to separate these things. Being mentally alert will help you to survive better. If I'm mentally alert, I can drive better, I can do my work better, I can do something else better. It's survival. Right. Awareness is not about survival. When I first asked you the question, how do you know that you're here? You went around and then you said, I'm conscious. Only because you're aware, you're alive. Your awareness is aliveness, your aliveness is awareness. The question is only about how alive. Lot of people think if they're fifty percent alive, it's pretty good. Yes, you can survive fifty percent. But you need to understand, if we want to torture somebody, if you want to torture somebody, what would you do? You'll kill them? Suppose you got, got employment in hell, let's say. You are given the job of torturing people. What will you do, kill them? Hello? No. no. Keep them half alive. <laughs> if you keep them half alive, that's called torture. So right now this is called self-torture. Maybe you're preparing for employment elsewhere <laughs> because right from the age of two or three, People, your parents are asking you, what will you become, what will you become, what… <laughs> well, I'm born as a human being, I'm supposed to strive to become a human being. <laughs> See, every life on this planet, whether it is in a bird, if it's a worm, insect, bird, animal, tree, whatever, every one of them is strive, striving to become a full-fledged life and that's all. A worm is trying to be a full-fledged worm, a tree is trying to be a full-fledged tree, that's all a human being also, to become a full-fledged human being. No, no, what will you become means what kind of job will you get from the age of three. <laughs> this madness has come because of this whatever the last century of poverty in the country, people are so deprived and they think if they don't have a job they won't eat anything, you know. It comes from a certain poverty consciousness, we must pass it, that generation is passed. Right now, if you have a few brain cells working, you can make a living, yes? You don't have to be qualified for anything. If you have a few brain cells working in your head, you can make a living. That's not an issue anymore. There was a time it was like that, it's no more like that. It's time we leave that, it's not about what you will become, how you will be. What will be the experience of your life? Will it become the peak experience? or is it just a mediocre nonsense? This is the question. Because once you have come as a human being, whatever happens, it's not enough, something more needs to happen, yes or no? 
you may think you're doing different things. The man who goes to the temple, the man who goes to the bar, the man who goes to work, the man who goes to conquer the world, every one of them is just seeking a larger slice of life. Some people go to the mall, some people go to the PDS, just like that. Some people think it, it comes free in the temple, so they go there, somebody else go to conquer the world, somebody go shopping. What is it that you're trying to do? Just trying to have a larger slice of life. But it doesn't matter, if you gather the whole world around you, you will not have a larger slice. Your larger slice will happen only if your ability to perceive is enhanced. If your ability to experience is not enlarged, then you can have everything around you, still your experience is the same. Modern life is just that. No other generation had the things that we are having around us. Most homes are looking like a warehouse. <laughs> because they're shopping trips, they don't know where to keep it, everything is falling all over the people, there's no place for the people, full of things. But does it bring well-being or happiness or anything? No. You cannot determine the experience of what's happening within you from outside. It has to happen from within. And it is how enlarged your experience is is how big your life is, not about socially how big people think you are. That may work socially a few things for you, but it, do it doesn't work in terms of life. So when we say awareness, we are talking about the essential ingredient of life because only because you're aware, you're alive. Isn't it so? Yes? Now the question is how alive? If we have to use an analogy, right now this light is uh, you know, blinding me. <laughs> now, if you reduce the voltage, it'll be like this, it'll light up only that much. But they want it to light up everything, so they turned up the voltage. So if you turn down the voltage, you'll see only this much, if you turn it up, you'll see that much, if you really turn it up, you'll see the entire hall. Awareness is the same thing. Because you're conscious or you're aware, you know something. If you become little more aware, you will know something more. If you know little more aware, something more. All these words are connected. Pragna, the word guru, all these things are connected because pragna means you're conscious. Because you're conscious, depending upon the intensity of your consciousness, accordingly your vision of everything around you is enhanced. Now the word guru means, gu means darkness, it's a four-letter word, you know. Ru means dispeller. So a guru is not supposed to teach you something, he is not supposed to give you a philosophy, not supposed to give you an ideology. It is just that he is supposed to throw little more light. Little more light means, if I… Sh suppose this hall is dark and you are only able to see the first two rows, you are not able to see them. If I flashed a torchlight, you saw, oh, all those people, the whole world out there. But I switched off the torch. Then you know there is something, now I have to see. What do I need? I need a torch beam of my own, okay? <laughs> this is the job. <laughs> because the, the children in the home where I'm staying, they're declaring, he's… he's not like a guru, he doesn't talk like a guru, he doesn't look like a guru, he doesn't walk like a guru, he's not a guru <laughs> I'm very glad, I'm getting certified. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> now, about seeing everything the way it is, because if I want to walk through this, there are a whole lot of people right now, belief systems. You believe in God, all right? Now, I know in the corporate world, people have shifted this, I believe in myself. <laughs> Which is somewhat misplaced, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Both are misplaced. They produce different kinds of impacts. Absolutely. See, belief means what? Essentially, belief means you are unwilling to admit what you do not know as I do not know. Whatever you do not know, you believe. If you believe, what it does to you is, it'll give you confidence. Confidence without clarity is a disaster. Right now, let us say, I cannot see these people, my vision is not clear. But I have great confidence, I'm going to walk through these people. You know what I will do? I'll step over everybody and go, because I'm very confident, the whole lot of people like this. If my vision is clear, I will go through this without even touching anybody. If my vision is not clear, 
and I have no confidence, I will ask, please can somebody show me the way? But now I have no clarity, but I have confidence. It's a disastrous process. So believing in God, believing in yourself, believing in anything means, it's just a B word, you know. You're just bullshitting yourself about something that you do not know. Right, right. <laughs> What, what is the problem? What I know, I know, what I do not know, I do not know, what is the problem with this? If this much sincerity enters your life, come to this much, what I know, I know, what I do not know, I do not know. I don't believe anything, I don't disbelieve anything, I'm willing to look at everything. You will become a sensible human being and every one hour you remind yourself you're mortal and ex ex you know, celebrate with a smile that you're still alive you will see wonders will happen to you <laughs> Thank you. Great. So even a free-flowing… It's eight o'clock. No, 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 we have more time, we have more time. I was just no, going I, to say… I'm not saying that, it's eight o'clock, you're still alive, wow! We are all alive <laughs> That's the collective celebration.